Okay, this is a, a brief um, video to help you get started with the lab. Uh, I actually will be in the lab at 2 at, at UTSA, but if you're doing it at home, this will help you at home. So uh, a couple of things. So we're doing lab 3 today. It's pretty straightforward, uh, and you, we'll give you most of the code, uh, but you do have to write some parts of it. Um, the main thing is to make sure that the constraint file is synchronized with the um, with the with the with the starter code, and I I just edited the constraint file, so I think it's all set now. Um, but I tested it on a different computer and I edited it on this one, so uh, there may be a little problem. So uh, basically, um, make sure that you um, go through the list. So let me pull that up and see if I can blow it up enough so you can see what's going on. So um, We'll do this. So here, here are the two files. Let's see. I'm gonna, I'm gonna shrink myself down, and I'll put these over here. Oops, that's good. Now, so here is, um, here's the code. Now I think we have to magnify this, and hopefully that'll work. Make it a little bit bigger. And then I'm going to bring in the constraint file. And um, let's magnify that some too. OK. So and then we generally need to look at the other side. So so uh, this one, this one has all the signals in it. Uh, some of the constraint files, I deleted those. And I just put it left in the stuff you really needed. This one has everything, but when there's a uh, when there's a pound um, in front of it, it it comments it out. So I think these are all okay. So anyway, the first one is um, is the clock, and uh, I think in the board file uh, it is actually set up as. Um, Yeah, I think that's all I need to change. I think it is set up as um, CLK 100 MHZ, uh, the 100 megahertz clock. But in our program, it's just called CLK. So you do have to change this to CLK. Uh, otherwise, that constraint file will be wrong, and then you won't match up. But I but I did change it, so the one that's on Blackboard is now changed. Um, and then uh, the I think the rest of it, so you have to be... A little bit careful. Oh, let's see. Oh, maybe so. I think, yeah, okay. I have, Maybe I have to do this too. Uh, sweet grief. Well, anyway. All right, well. Okay, so I may have to kill this, and I may have to do this. Okay, it did open with WordPad. I may have to fix it again. But anyway, one of the problems is when you edit these, these, these. Uh, oh, and I call it XDC. Oh man, I screwed that up too. Okay, well anyway, I'll fix that. But when you edit these things in, uh, in WordPad and you save them, they come out as text files, and that's the wrong extent. And then, and then Vivado has big problems with that. So you have to make sure that the extents get changed. All right, so let me. Let me f fix this. I'm going to pause the video until I get this fixed. Okay, I think now I fixed it. I think I have all the all the all the pins that are correct, and I've updated the file on Blackboard. So if you've downloaded the file previously, delete that and download the new one, uh, and just make sure that lowercase LED, uh, lowercase SW then lowercase btn and then uppercase u, btn uppercase l, btn uppercase r, btn uppercase d, and then finally clk instead of uh, clk100 mhz. All right, so assuming all those are good, that should be the main problem. And you, and you can actually see that when you elaborate the design, you'll see, uh, you'll see tags that are not connected to anything, and that'll let you know that they're not, uh, that, they're, that there's a disconnect in the uh, constraint file. Okay, so so here's here are all the uh, module inputs: the clock, 
all the four the four buttons, not the center button. We're not using the center button. This this uh, slide switches and the 16 slide switches, 16 LEDs. But uh, we're only using the upper uh, eight slide switches. Um, but we're using all 16 LEDs. And the way this works, the upper uh, 16, uh, the upper eight LEDs show the actual count, and the lower eight LEDs uh, show. Uh, sorry, the upper eight LEDs show the uh, actual count. And the upper eight LEDs show what what's in what the slide switches the upper uh, eight slide switches are set to, and those can be used as a parallel load. Okay, so those can be used as a parallel load. All right, so if we go to if we get rid of this, well, let me just continue to look at this, and hopefully, I think you can see this. I will make it. I'll look and see, make sure it is big enough. We'll blow it up a little bigger. Uh, so we can get rid of this and uh, let's do that and then I'll put myself on here okay so um, all right so we do have a parameter uh, that helps us uh, count the clock down and you can change this parameter um, when you uh, when you instantiate your mo your uh, device under test which is your top module into your test bench, you can change this so that instead of dividing the uh, uh, 100 megahertz clock by um, 10 million, I think, or maybe by 100 million, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, yeah, by 100 million, right? 1, 2, 3, yeah. So instead of dividing it by 100 million to get one second, you, you can switch it to one so that your simulation will run really fast, uh, will, will run, well, it's all simulation time, so it doesn't really matter. It's, it's not real time, it's just simulation time. So you only have to go uh, one tick of simulation time to get one tick of actual time, as opposed to having to do 100 uh, million ticks of your clock to get one tick of your slow clock, which is, uh, which, it creates real hassles and problems with your test bench. So you can change this parameter when you instantiate it, uh, and you can uh, you can uh, put it in uh, put it in uh, um, in parentheses before you instantiate it. And I think I showed that, and I think you'll see that in the test bench, and that really helps your simulation. Uh, and then when you actually run your module, you can use the parameter set to 100 million so that um, so that you'll you'll divide the fast clock so you get a, a one second slow clock that lets you see the thing count. And then uh, then you have your count register. So this this holds your count. And then the way this uh, continuous assignment statement works, you assign your LEDs to the uh, the upper eight uh, switches and the eight bits of the count register for the lower LEDs. So that way. Uh, you're assigning all the LEDs with one uh, assignment statement here. The lower eight represent the count. So whenever the count changes, the, the it'll be reflected in the lower eight. And whenever you change the set switches, the slide switches, uh, it'll change the LEDs in the upper eight. And then, um, then we um, we th here's the slow clock. And notice that we have. Uh, uh, we put in this pound width, that is the parameter. So that makes width equal to 100,000, I mean 100 million. And then down here, uh, within uh, where we define that, that slow clock module right here, uh, we make it default to 100 million, but, but, you, but you change it. So we're just re, we're revalidating it here because we're putting it in. Um, And um, notice that, so this is a little confusing, but we have to use two different names for parameter, and we have to have two separate parameters. One parameter has to be associated with our top level module, and that's right here, and it's called width. And when we instantiate the slow clock, we actually use width. Uh, for the parameter, 
which is the here defined to be 100 million. But notice down here when we define the module, and we could have left this out, uh, so I didn't really have to do that. But uh, when we define the module, uh, uh, module slow clock, so we put in clock and clock slow. And uh, this is a new parameter, and this parameter's name is size. It defaults to 100 million. But when we instantiate it up here, even if it defaulted to something else, it would still be set at 100 million because we used width when we instantiated it up here. All right. So anyway, uh, so, so the reason we do those two parameters is because we want uh, the top level module to be able to reach in to the counter module and change the clock divider. And the only way to do that is to have two parameters. One that's defined inside the clock module and the other that's defined inside the top module that then is used when we instantiate the clock module. Now, in the clock module, we, we didn't have to create, uh, we could have said, well, we, we didn't have to actually instantiate it here uh, when, we, um, when we did this. We didn't really have to put pound width because it would have defaulted to 100 um, to 100,000. But when we in, put it in the test bench, we do have to put uh, we we when we instantiate this module, well okay, yeah, we did. We had to instantiate it. We had to use width here because when we put this module in the top in the test bench, we can put in uh, we can put in counter 8 pound and then we can put in uh, 1 which will change width to one, which will which will change um, size down here. Where is my module? Which will change uh, size. I'm losing it. I can't see it right here. Which will change size to one, and that way the slow clock will no longer be a slow clock really. But in simulation time, it doesn't matter. Um, and that'll, that'll mean that you don't have to do 100 million ticks to get one tick of actual time in your simulation on your slow clock. So that's just one way to do that. And, and it, it really does help you. Uh, it, makes your, it makes your test bench so much more readable when you don't have to go 100 million ticks to get one tick. Uh, that's just terrible. It ruins the simulation. So, so that's why we did all that. It's a little confusing, I admit, but anyway, that's how that works. Okay, so anyway, and you can see in our clock module here, um, our input is clock. Well, inside this module, the names can be whatever we want, and uh, they could be the same, but we changed them. When you instantiate it, though, you have to put lowercase clk, which is, you see up here what, what you do, uh, lowercase clk, because that is what the port list calls clock right here. And then the clock that get, comes back is clock slow, but in the module that could be uh, that could be anything. In fact, it is. Uh, let's see. Here it's lowercase clk underscore slow, and here it's uppercase clk underscore slow. Doesn't matter. This name is only relevant to the internal module, and this name is connected by uh, position with this name. Got a squirrel crawling up the side of my house, making noise. Um, so anyway, so that's how that works. Uh, so remember, the names you use here don't matter as long as you either do the position. If you do name dissociation, then you have to use the dot construct. And that, that's fine too. All right. So anyway, within this slow clock module, it it we have a... Um, we initialize the clock uh, to zero. We initialize the count to zero, and then uh, and then 
we initialize the slow clock to zero. And then in the always block, we trigger on the actual 100 megahertz clock that gets passed through this variable. And then we, uh, we, add one, we add one to it. And then if the counter is bigger than size, then we, uh, then we zero it out and we, uh, we invert the slow clock. So we basically tick the slow clock. It, it turns out the slow clock uh, has a, a total period of two seconds uh, instead of uh, one second because we, we invert it. So it, you have to execute this twice to get a full tick. All right. Anyway, so it's a two second clock. Um, and you could change that by, uh, by putting, uh, instead of 100 million, you could put in 50 million, and then it would be a one second clock. And you can just change that parameter, no problem. When you instantiate it, width, you could define width here as 500 million instead of, or yeah, uh, sorry, 50 million instead of 100 million. Okay, so that's that. And really, there's nothing much else. Then here is our count. Uh, notice we have an initial block. We set the count to zero. And then we have an always block that triggers on our slow clock on the positive edge. And then... Uh, we, uh, we then, in all of our uh, control signals, are synchronous. Now, you can take these push buttons, and you can uh, call an edge on the push button and move them up here in the sensitivity list and make them asynchronous if you want. Uh, but uh, we made them all synchronous. And then you'll see down here that, um, that the, uh, so this is our counter output uh, this register, this 32-bit register. And then, um, okay, I chased the squirrel away. All right, um, okay, I think that's, Now, um, so that sets everything up for you. Um, now, here, where it says, put your code here, that's where you have to put your code. And then here's the end of the module. All right, so I, I haven't given you the actual code to do the count. But it's really pretty straightforward, right? You have to do some if statements. One of your if statements, uh, and you have to have an always block. And that always block has to be triggered on the slow clock. And, uh, and so uh, when your always block triggers, then within that you should put, well, here, I already did put the always block in um, right here. Uh, there is no end to the always block. So I guess you, you remember, don't forget to put an end uh, before the end module. So in your always block, you have to put some if statements. So the always block is going to trigger on the on the on the slow clock so you want it to uh, when you punch the up button you want it to increase the count value and the count register is an 8-bit register so you just do count register plus one and then on the down button you want it to subtract one from the count register so you just do count register minus one and then on the load button, or the, on the clear button, you just want it to set count register equal to zero. And on the load button, uh, which is the reset, that's, so the clear button is, uh, is the BTN R for write, for reset. And then the load button is BTN L for load. And the, of course, BTN U for up is the increase of the count. BTN D for down, decrease of the count. On the load, you want to take the settings on, on your set switches 15 through 8 and set them equal to the count register or set the count register equal to the switches rather set it backwards but you know what I mean okay so that's the code you need to put it put here and it should be pretty straightforward and then you can uh, you can elaborate your design see if it looks good uh, and then you can uh, uh, simulate it with your test bench and see if it's going to work um, the I let's see I I think you have to do your own test bench. I think I didn't help you with that. Let's see. 
Uh, we'll go back to um, here. Oh, well, I guess I did give you a test bench. So let's look at that real quick. And here we are. And we will increase this. All right, so, so notice here, um, it's the test bench. The port list, as always in your test bench, is empty. There's nothing in the port list. Now here's where you're going to instantiate the counter. Notice how our parameter here is set to 1, which means instead of, instead of dividing our, our fast clock by 100 million, we're going to divide it by 1, which means we're going to run at the fast clock rate. But since you're not really connected to the fast clock, you're connected to simulated time because there's no, no, nothing's connected to the board. This is all simulation. It doesn't really matter. And in fact, it makes it a whole lot better because otherwise you'd have to do 100 million ticks to actually see one thing change here. Uh, your always block wouldn't, within your, uh, f within your top module, wouldn't even execute one time until you ticked it a, a hundred million times. So that's, that makes it crazy. And then, um, then you declare some variables here. And uh, when we instantiate then, uh, let's see, where did we instantiate it? Here, we did. And we put in all the variables. Notice the names are all different, and that's totally fine. There's positional association here. We didn't, we didn't use dot, the dot notation. So you do have to make sure that all these positions are correct. And then, and then basically here you can test up, test down, and dis display the time and ending simulation. Uh, you can make this fancier by, uh, by, uh, by checking the output to see if it is what it's supposed to be. But here, here we load the test bench. Uh, so we load TB equals this, and then we uh, make the button equal to 1. Uh, and then, uh, let's see, we make the button load equal to 0. So that, that test to make sure that, uh, that the load overrides the count up. And so anyway, so you can certainly go through and change this, but you can see this is a little example. Um, when you make the button 1, you then also have to make the button 0 at some point to get it to, to stop loading. And then uh, the up button is still 1, so it should start counting up here. So you may want to work on this test bench. This is just kind of a starter test bench for you. And now, where does it, where does it, how does it, where, where is the clock for this test bench clock? How do you get that? Well, that's generated down here in this little always block that basically uh, takes clock te underscore test bench and equals the inverse of clock underscore test bench with a uh, one nanosecond period. So, this is, this is how we generate clocks in test benches. And you can, and this always block is right in your test bench. Now, again, this is not how you would generate a clock normally. This is only value, only, val, only valid within a test bench. Okay, I think that pretty much hopefully gets you started. And uh, when it's all said and done, you should see it work. Let me see if I got mine. I'll pause this and I'll see if I can demonstrate my board. Okay, so now I'm going to, uh, uh, I'm going to uh, demonstrate the operation on my board that I've just programmed. Now, one of the things I did, uh, and I'll show it to you here in two seconds. Let me just switch the camera. Okay, and I'll, I'll turn on the light so you can see it. And I'll see if I can somewhat get it focused. Good luck, right? This is very... Okay, so anyway, that's kind of close. That should be workable. All right. Now, um, yeah, my, my stupid thing just doesn't, it doesn't focus very well. 
don't know why. It's a little better, maybe. Okay, well, anyway, one of the things I wanted to show you, if you flip the board over, you'll notice that there's uh, there's a little SD card slot here. And if you, if you go into the directory structure and find the bit file, which is under implementations, uh, there's a whole lot of files, but you just have to search for the BIT file. There's only one of those. Uh, and if you put the BIT file in the root directory of your SD card, and then you put your SD card in here, um, then then you can uh, then it'll load. Uh, and if you have the jumper, uh, this jumper here set for SD card, uh, which is the position this direction. Here I think you can see. If you have it set for SD instead of USB, when you uh, you can still power it with the USB cord. Um, uh, but uh, so I'll turn it on. So I'll turn it on, and then you'll see once it comes on, it takes a few minutes before the programmed light comes on. And there's a little programmed LED light right there that should come on. Uh, maybe, I'll, maybe I'll turn off the, the light here, and I'll use the this light. Yeah, that'll be a little better. Okay, now you can see the programmed light is on. And now that that's on... Now notice, we'll, we'll program it. Let me flip it around. Now the USB card just serves as power now. We're not, we didn't program it through the USB card. And now notice, my upper lights, as I, as I change the switches, I can do it. So let me, let me put in, let's see, I think, is this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. So I'll put in, I'll put in one, two, three, four, and then I'll do. I'll, now I'm going to load it. Now I'm going to punch the lo left button, which is right here. And you're going to see then. Right now the count here is zeroed out and it's not counting. Now if I if I hold the up button, it'll count once. And it's a two second clock because it's a. Now now if I hit the load button over here. It's going to load what I put in here in my lights. And now I can count up. If I count up, it's gonna the next count's gonna gonna be a one and four zeros. And then it starts counting up again. And then if I count down, it'll count back. And then if I clear it, it clears. So though that's how it should work. When you push the button, remember the buttons are synchronous, so it's gonna take them uh, a short amount of time. To be to work. Now you clearly want the you clearly want the up count and down count buttons. Uh, well, they could be they could be asynchronous. It doesn't really matter. But um, but when you test them in your in your if statement, you can test them uh, to see if they're pushed or not. And they should be they should be a one when they're pushed. I believe that's correct. Um, the uh, so. If you want to move your some of your buttons into your uh, into your sensitivity list in your always statement that you're going to write, th then that that'll make them asynchronous, which might which might be nice because then it'll be a little faster. But remember, when you if you if you have the button on the falling edge when you push the button, it'll activate. But if you have the button on the rising edge, it'll work when you let the button go. So as long as you hold the button down, nothing would happen. Uh, so. Um, you do have to be a little bit careful, uh, although the slow clock will help you some. But you do have to be a little bit careful because uh, if you make if you put the buttons in the sensitivity list, uh, remember that that uh, well, if the button bounces a little bit, your always block could be triggered a number of times. So that's probably why you don't want to put the count up button in the sensitivity list. But you could put the reset button or the load button in there because if it loads multiple times, it doesn't really matter. It'll still be the same value. But uh, but if you put the count up button in there and you actually have it increment when that button is pushed, um, you, what you may very well find is that y you may execute it. Uh, there may be a bounce effect and you may see it execute a number of times. Uh, so you can play with that and see if that works or not. 
Um, all right. Um, so do the lab, do the do the fill out the sheet, demonstrate it, or take a small video. Remember when you take your if you're doing this at home and you do your video, then uh, make your ID visible in the video, and then we're gonna terminate this program.